Hello and welcome to another coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to program from scratch something called Smart Rockets. Okay, what is this Smart Rockets thing? Well, this Smart Rockets project, which I have running uh, behind me, you can find a link to it in this video's description, is something created by Jer Thorpe uh, some number of years ago. Uh, it was it's developed in Flash which is a uh, environment for programming ActionScript. Um, I'm gonna do this in JavaScript using the P5.js framework. The reason why I love this project is it's a great example of genetic algorithms in the wild at play with an animation physics-based system. So what you'll see here is that there are these rockets being launched from the bottom and they're trying to reach that target up there. And they have built into them this DNA, this DNA, that this virtual DNA that tells them how to move about the screen. So let me briefly uh, talk to you about how that works. So the rockets actually have a bunch of uh, like kind of thrusters on them. I'm, this is my like pathetic, terrible drawing of that. And the, all of those point in a certain direction. So the number of thrusters and the direction that they point in is part of their DNA. And then the sequence by which they fire, first, second, third, fourth, uh, is also part of their DNA. So you can imagine like if you had a control panel with five buttons on it, you could press those five buttons in some sort of sequence to try to get push it in some efficient way to reach that target. So what I need, what I need is a couple things. I need to ultimately have a rocket object, and that rocket object is going to have to have physics built into it. I'm also going to need to have some DNA object, which is DNA to control the physics. And then the DNA object is going to need to have functions like mutation and crossover. These are pieces of functionality that exist as part of a genetic algorithm. Hey, if you want to know about genetic algorithms, I have a whole set of video tutorials linked to in the description of this video that go through the algorithm in detail. I'm going to do that again in this video, but I'll be programming kind of quickly. So if you want the sort of longer explanation of that, go back and watch those videos. And then the third thing here is I'm going to need a population object. And the population object is going to manage uh, an array of these rocket objects. So I'm going to make some rockets let them go, have them evolve, let them go again, have them evolve, let them go again, and eventually they should make it from the bottom to the top. Maybe I could put some obstacles in their way, that sort of thing. Let's check on how these rockets are doing. You can see a kind of path that they're, uh, by the way, the, the text smart rockets here is an obstacle, and they're trying to figure out how to get around it. So I'm gonna leave, um, I'm gonna leave this browser window uh, open, hopefully, I won't forget to close it, and at the end of the video, we'll come back and check on how those smart rockets are doing. Now, I'm also gonna do something a little bit crazy, it's not that crazy. I'm going to program this all using CodePen. I have already added the P5.js JavaScript files. You can check my video of how to do that in a different video. I've already added those, to, and, and I just started with basically nothing. I have create canvas and background. This is the only code I have. Create a canvas and draw a black background. So the first thing I want to do is create this rocket object. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that with a uh, constructor function. And I want my rocket to have a position. And I'm going to say create vector. Uh, I want it to have a velocity. I'm going to say create vector. And I want it to have an acceleration. And I'm going to say create vector. Then uh, I'm not so used to using code pen, so we'll see how this goes for me. I then also want to give it a function, an apply force function, um, which where this rocket can receive a force. And that force would get added to its acceleration. That is Newton's law at play. And then I also want to, what else do I want to do? I want to have an update. Oh, and that should say this.applyForce equals function. I also want to have it have an update function, this.update equals function. And I want that function, I want to do the sort of standard physics algorithm that I do in a ton of my examples, where I have uh, this.velocity add this.acceleration. And then I want to have this dot uh, position at this dot velocity. And then I also want to clear the acceleration at the end by multiplying it by zero. Because so the, the whole this, this is like a, I just built a physics engine in like 10 seconds. Basically, I have an object that has a position, a velocity, and acceleration. Acceleration gets controlled by forces in the environment or forces by its rocket thrusters, so to speak. And the update function uh, is where uh, the physics actually happens. Okay, so I also want to have a function called this dot um, show. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be. My rocket won't be as pretty and beautiful as Jer's smart rocket. Um, I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm just gonna make a rectangle at this dot position dot x. 
this dot position dot y, and the rectangle will be thin, but tall. And I'm also, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say translate. I wanna rotate it in the direction that it's moving. I think that'll be a useful thing to have. So I'm actually gonna translate to its position and then draw the rectangle at zero, zero. And I'm also gonna say rect mode center. And I am also going to say then rotate by this dot velocity dot heading. So the heading function in, in, a, in the P5 vector object gives you an angle of the direction that a vector is pointing. So I can rotate by the angle, the velocity being the direction that it's moving. I also want to add around this push and pop. And there, if I add push and pop around this function, then uh, all this rotating and translating won't ref affect other things. So let's, let's go now and see if I can create just a single rocket on the screen. I'm going to say a rocket equals new rocket. And then I'm going to say a rocket dot update and rocket dot show. Oh, look, there it is, <laughs> the rocket in the top left. So one thing I want to do is I want my rockets to start at the bottom of the window. So we can see there it started there. And then let's just say for the sake of argument, I give it a velocity pointing up. Is it moving? Whoa, OK. So one thing you'll notice, I drew it vertically. And the angle I'm getting is probably 90 degrees, so it rotated it. So I think I'll just change the way I draw the rectangle to be wide and tall. Uh, and you can see there, now I have a rocket moving up. So I have a single rocket. That's a good sign. I am getting something going here. OK, I'm looking everywhere because I got a screen here. I got a camera here. I got a wall here. <laughs> I'm going a little crazy here. OK, this is good. This is good. OK, now what I think I want to do is um, I'm also now I'm going to create a, a population. You know, I don't necessarily need a whole separate object to manage this stuff. But I'm going to do it anyway. And in the population, I want to have an array of rockets. And I want to, uh, I want to also have uh, population size. We'll just make it like 100. Back, I made the font size a little bigger so it would be easier to see in the video. Um, so what I want to say is this.rockets index i equals a new rocket. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is have their initial velocity, just for right now, be uh, just so I can see a random, uh, a random vector. And uh, what I'm going to do now is create a population. And I'm going to say the population should update. And uh, I'm just going to actually write a function called run. And then in the population object itself, I'm going to write a function called run. And what I want to do there is, OK, back again. And what I want to do is now say, oh, this dot, uh, this dot rockets. Whoops. I need to say this dot rockets, uh, rockets index i dot update. And this dot rockets index i dot show. I'm back after some technical difficulties. and. There's a big bug in my code. It's not missing a this dot, but it's almost as bad. Uh, remember how I said here I need this function called pop? I need this function called pop to use push and pop to make it so that this translate and rotate only affects this particular rocket. Well, guess what I did? I made a variable named pop <laughs> for population, and that variable pop is now my global variable, which overrides the p5 function named pop. So I really shouldn't have done that. Um, I need to name this something else. I'll, I'll call it popule for population. And you know what? I don't know. I, I can actually just say population. I'll do this, population run. And now we should see uh, there's one rocket lifting off. And now I can change the population size to like 25. And we can see, there we go, a bunch of rockets all going off in their random direction. Let's clean up some things about these rockets. Um, let's make them a little bit smaller. Uh, let's say uh, no stroke. Uh, let's give them fill 255 with a little bit of alpha. And we should see now. Uh, there we go. So this is, these are our smart rockets lifting off from the bottom of the screen. So we're getting somewhere. We've got the physics system. Now, if I return 
to over here. Uh, in the original smart rockets, there are actually a set of specific thrusters positioned on the rocket that push off a force in a given direction. I'm going to do something a little bit simpler. What I'm going to do as the object's DNA is I'm just going to create an array. The array of DNA, is, the, the DNA is just going to be an array. And in each spot in that array will be a vector pointing in some, at, at first at least, some random direction. And what the rocket will do, it will read that array, each vector at a time, and apply that vector as a force. So let's look at how that might work. Uh, press this button, here I am. Okay, so what I want to do now is create an object called uh, DNA. And in that object, I'm going to create an array, and I'm going to call that array genes. And I'm also going to create like a length uh, um, variable. And actually, I'm going to make this a global variable. I'm going to have a global variable just called lifespan. And let's make that 200 right now. Because I'm going to let each rocket live for 200 frames. And so its DNA needs to have an array of 200 vectors. It's going to apply a single vector each frame of animation. So, um, you know, it might, so I'm gonna cr uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from I to 0 to lifespan. And I'm going to, in that array, I'm going to give it a random vector. So what I'm going to do now is I want the uh, velocity vector for each rocket to, whoops, to start off at 0. Come on, everybody. So we can see now here all of the objects just start at the bottom of the screen and they're not moving. But I'm going to give each rocket some DNA. And then in the update, fun and then each rocket also needs uh, a counter variable, this.count. And what I'm going to do in update is I'm going to say this.apply force DNA.genes this.count. And guess what? <laughs> this dot, this dot, I forgot. This dot, this dot, this dot. So I need this.dna.genes dot index this dot count. I know that's a mouthful of stuff. But I've made a DNA object in the rocket. That DNA object is an, has built into it an array called genes. It has uh, 200 uh, uh, vectors in it. And each frame, what I want to do is apply one of those vectors as a force. And then I want to increase the count. So now we can see what, who, look at this. <laughs> Let's run this again. You can see them going flying off like crazy. So. Those, those forces were rather, um, were rather large. So another thing I think I could possibly do in my uh, DNA is I could uh, just make the force a little bit weaker. And you can see, there we go. So here are the rockets kind of moving off, each getting a force. And I, I also want to look, I want to be able to see the, um, the, w the, the kind of the lifespan itself. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to say uh, 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 life p <laughs> uh, life p equals create p. I'm going to make a paragraph element, and then um, I'm going to um, and you know what? I just realized even though it's nice to have the the um, rockets have that count, I think I'll just make that count a global variable because it's really going to be the same for everyone. Uh, so var count equals 0. And what I'm going to do is say life p dot html count, and then count plus plus. So now you can see over here, right? I've got something showing me where we are. And now at some point, I'm going to go past the end of that array. I'm sure we're seeing some sort of error here. Count is not defined. OK, well, that's something else. Uh, where, where am I getting that? Uh, this dot count, that can go away. Um, so at a certain point, I'm going to go past that array. Um, but that is when um, the generation would end, and I'm going to reset the count back to zero. Ah, are you following me? I got lost in my own thought with all my computers and typing and coding thing. So here we are. And yes, um, here we are. We now have a system so far where I have 
a population of rockets. The rockets have DNA. The DNA has embedded into it an array of vectors that tell it how to move around the screen. Now, what I need is a target. I need to have a place where these, um, where these uh, rockets are trying to reach. So I'm going to uh, create a variable called target, a global variable. And I'm going to say target equals create vector. And let's put it in the middle of the window at the top. And uh, what I'm going to do also in draw is I'm going to just draw a nice little ellipse at target.x, target.y, uh, 16 comma 16. And we should see that's where they're trying to get to. That's our target. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to say here, if count equals lifespan, count plus plus, then I want to do so. I want to reset. Let me just reset count back equal to zero right now. And as a little trick, I'm just going to do this, just to sort of see. This is not what we want to do, but I kind of want the whole thing to start over. Uh, I don't know the auto format in CodePen. Okay, so now we should see when this gets to 200. So, so we've got the system working here. Um, we have, and I'm just going to kind of zoom on this, zoom in on this to talk about it for a second. Okay. So over here, we have a system now where I am every 200 frames launching 200 rockets into space. And I'm counting up to 200. And when I get to 200, I start 200 rockets over. What I'm missing now from this example is the genetic algorithm itself. What I, instead of just creating a completely new random population, I want to make a new population out of the rockets. Um, uh, I want to make a new population from uh, from, from the previous population of rockets. I want them to create children rockets. I want the rockets with the highest fitness that did the best to pass on their genetic information to the next generation. The next step that I need to do in population is, I'm going to call, say this dot uh, evaluate. Uh-oh, my camera went off. Um, so what do I want to do in evaluate? I want to run through all of the rockets. And I want to calculate their fitness. Uh, this dot rockets index i uh, calculate uh, fitness. So I need a new function in each rocket to calculate their fitness. So what, where are the, where's my rocket object? Somewhere here. Right? I'm going to write a function now. This dot calc fitness equals a function. So what should their fitness be? Well, we could say that the closer a rocket makes it to the target, the more fit it is. So I can say var d equals distance. Uh, this dot pause dot x, this dot pause dot y, target dot x, target dot y. CodePen couldn't fit that all. It's not CodePen's fault, but I don't have enough room to fit that all in one line, which is why it broke off. But you can see I'm taking the distance. Now, the other thing I want to do, though, is say that, um, and let's give these uh, rockets a variable called fitness. So, and I'm going to say this dot fitness equals 1 divided by distance, right? Because if the distance is 1, my fitness is 1. If the distance is 100, it's further away. My fitness should be lower, like 0 0.01, like 1 divided by 100. So in this sense, I now have a fitness of 1 divided by distance. OK, this is good. So in the population, uh, back to the population. <laughs> it's hard to have everything in one file. I have now calculated the fitness. Now the other thing that I need to do, if you watch my previous genetic algorithm videos, is create a mating pool. I want to have a mating pool from which I can pick parents to create the next generation of rockets. And in order to pick their parent, the parents, I want their probability, the higher their fitness, I want the higher chance of picking them. So rockets that did really well or that get closer to the target are more likely to pass their genetic information down to the next generation. So what I want to do is create a variable. I'm going to call it a mating pool. And it's an empty uh, array. And the first thing I want to do, actually, I need to make sure I clear it. So uh, every, gen every time I do this, I want to like, make it an empty array again. And then what I want to do is I want to, uh, I, I, I want to normalize 
all of the fitness values. I think this would be useful to do. Uh, so one thing I want to do is uh, while I'm calculating the fitness, I want to do a max fit. And the maximum fitness is 0. And if this dot rockets index i dot max fit is greater than uh, uh, max fit, and this dot rockets fitness is greater than max fit, then I want max fit to equal that particular rocket's fitness. So I want to find the maximum fitness. What's the highest fitness out of all of the elements? And then after I do that, I want to um, go through them all again. And uh, I want to take their fitness value and divide it by the maximum fitness. So that should normalize them, right? If the values, were, if the maximum fitness is 1,000, the one with 1,000 divided by 1,000, I'll get the value 1. All the fitness values will be between 0 and 1 at the moment. Um, there's a few divide by 0 issues we could, walk, we could, we could have, but, um, but I'm not going to um, worry about that too much right now. OK. Uh, another way instead of doing, I did just realize, though, here's another thing I could do. Um, let me go back to the rocket. This will be kind of, I think this is actually kind of useful. Why don't I, instead of um, doing 1 divided by distance, why don't I map that distance, which you know, essentially has a range between 0 and like the width of the window, and give that a value all the way between width and, and just sort of invert that value. I guess that's kind of the same thing, but let me just do that. Uh, in, in this case, I might not need to normalize it. There's all sorts of possibilities. I'm just working this out. <laughs> Something might go wrong, but let's try that and see how that goes. And then let me go back to the population, right? Where was that? Ah, and so now what I want to do is I want to loop through it again, and I want to get a number n, which is equal to each rocket's fitness, and I'm going to say times 100. I'm going to do that arbitrarily right now. And then I'm going to say for j equals 0, j is less than n, j plus plus. And then what I want to do is say this dot mating pool dot add, and I'm going to add this dot rockets index i. So the idea behind this bit of code right here that you've seen already, if you watch my other genetic algorithms videos, is that what I'm doing is I'm saying, basically, take the rocket's fitness, which is between 0 and 1, so, and then multiply it by 100. So I now have fitness values between 0 and 100. A rocket with a value of 100, a fitness of 100, should be in the mating pool 100 times. A rocket with a fitness value of 3 should be in the mating pool 3 times. So it still could be picked if it's only in there 3 times, but it'll be picked much more likely if it's in there 100 times. So the next thing that I want to do is, I'm gonna, and I'm going to write a new fun function for this, is natural, I'm going to call it natural, I'm just going to call it selection. I'm going to write a function called selection. And in selection, what I want to do is pick two parents. And so I'm going to say, uh, partner parent A, uh, and oh, I'm going to say uh, this dot mating pool. And um, I want to get a in random index uh, equal, uh, so, oh, you know what you can do in P5 now? I'm pretty sure in P5, the random function, you can actually just give it the array. This is a new feature of P5. If I just say random and then an array, it'll just give me a random element from that array. So I don't actually have to pick a random index. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's parent A. Now this is parent B. So I want two parents. And I could do something to like say, like, oh, I want to make sure you know, one is not the same as the other. But you know, uh, I want to make sure they're not the same. I don't pick the same twice. But I'm not too worried about that. OK, so I want to pick two. And then I want to make a child element. And I want to make that child by saying parent A dot crossover parent B. So this is, and that is now my wish list. I want the DNA. And this is really actually not the rocket. I want, um, 
I'm going to call this child. Yeah, yeah, I'll call it. Yeah, we'll call this child. I want to have in the DNA object a function that takes. Um, oh, you know what? This is actually interestingly enough. Parent A is a rocket object. So what I'm going to do is say dot DNA, because I'm going to go and grab the DNA from. I'm going to take the random rocket object and grab its DNA because what I want to do is create child DNA. I want parent A to cross DNA to cross over with parent B's DNA. So that means in the DNA object, which is there's going to be a lot of scrolling in this uh, right here, I need a new function and I need that function to be called crossover. And in this function, I need to create uh, a Another array, like child, uh, let me call it a new DNA, is, a, is an array. And what I want to do is loop through uh, the length of the genes. And it needs an argument partner. So the crossover function uh, needs an argument partner. And what I want to do is uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a midpoint. Midpoint equals a random number between zero and the length of the array. So I'm actually going to pick a random midpoint. I could always pick the exact middle. But what I want to do is I want to say if i is greater than zero, I want the new DNA to come from this, this object's genes. Otherwise, and no, I don't want if i is greater than the midpoint. And otherwise, I want the new DNA to come from the partner's genes. And then I want to return new DNA. So what I'm doing here is I now have written a crossover function. This is going to be a long video. <laughs> I have written a crossover function. We can look at it closely here, which basically says I am a DNA object, and I have received another DNA object. I'm going to pick somewhere. And they're both arrays. So I'm going to make a new array. And then I'm going to, um, there's, some, there's a couple, of there's some flaws here. I got I, I realizing. I got to fix something, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to uh, pick a midpoint in the length of the array, and I'm going to get half. You know, before the midpoint, I'm going to get these genes, and after the midpoint, I'm going to get the partner's genes. Now, there's an issue. This here is just an array, but what I really want is a DNA object. So what I want to do is actually say I want a new, uh, a new DNA object, and it'll make random genes when I do that, but I can. Um, and I want to fill the genes. I'm going to overwrite that this way. I could be a little bit more elegant about how I write this, in which case I could, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to be, so that's one way I could do it. But I'm actually going to keep this as an array. And I'm going to call this new genes. And then what I want to do is say return new DNA. I'm going to say return a new DNA object with the new genes which means I now can actually just give the DNA object an array rather than have it be random. And in this case, in the constructor function here, I can have a variable called genes. And I can say, if genes exists, then this dot genes should be that array. Otherwise, do all this other stuff. So now what I'm saying here is in this function, I, this DNA object could either receive genes and just create a DNA object from those genes, or if it doesn't receive genes, then it could just make random DNA. So now, uh, somebody in the chat, line 101, telling me that there's an error. Uh, yes, ah, uh, this return has to come after that for loop. So that is definitely an error. OK, so now I have my crossover function done. The, in the population object, which is, I guess, closer to the top here, uh, where I have uh, selection, I now have, this is child DNA. And now what I need to do, and I want to do this how many times? I want to do this. Ah, first, I want to say um, new population is an array. And then I want to loop through. And I'm going to say new rockets. New rockets. And I want to loop through the existing rockets. Uh, 
And I want to do this for every single existing, for ex every single, ex and this should say this.rockets. So now what I want to say is new rockets index i equals a new rocket with that child DNA. So this is what I want to do. I want to have parent A pick a DNA from one parent. Parent B pick a DNA from another parent. Cross over those two DNAs and make a new rocket with that DNA. Now, does my rocket, uh, where is the rocket object? <laughs> Scrolling like crazy once again. Now, the rocket object should have an optional argument. The rocket constructor should have an op optional argument called DNA. So I could say, if it receives DNA, then this dot DNA equals that DNA. Otherwise, it can make new random DNA. So once again, I now have rockets that can be made from DNA. It still will get the default position, velocity, and acceleration, but it can get that DNA. So let's see what we've got so far. Uh, where am I in the population now? Now what I want to do is I have this new population, and I just want to say this dot rockets is now the new rockets. So let's see if things are kind of working. In the main program now, instead of just making a new random population, what I should be able to do is say population.evaluate. I'm sure there's going to be tons of errors here, but we'll see what happens. Population. Dot, I'm almost certain that I've forgotten this dot, this dot, somewhere. <laughs> Population.selection. Back and I'm here to correct a few errors because I definitely this dot, this have some this dot things that are wrong. This dot, this dot. So uh, this should be this should, over here should be uh, this dot genes. This should be this dot genes dot length. And this, by the way, should not be this dot partner. It should be partner dot genes. So that wasn't working. So this that sort of helps things. There's an exclamation point here, which should be telling me unexpected token on line 41. So uh, this dot evaluate equals a function. Uh, OK, so let's see. Um, that kind of helps. That was a problem. Ah, great. So we've got an error. Let's see if I can look in the console. Uh, This.matingPool.add is not a function. So line 59 here. This.matingPool. Ah, so I'm in thinking in Java land where the, uh, I would use an array list and it would be push. I mean, it would be add. But in JavaScript, it should be push. So let's run this again. Uh, and when it gets to 200, let's see what happens. Ah, another error. Let's see what happens. Um, back. So this is a problem. I don't know why I said this.rockets equals new rockets, like new rockets was a function. No, new rockets is an array that I want to assign to the current rockets. So I'm going to do that. And let's see if we get now it running again. Ah, OK. So it looks like we're getting a new generation. And look at that. You can see how um, even just that second generation, the rockets are now kind of pointing more straight up. So the ones that have kind of kind of made it. Now, there's a bunch of issues with this. Number one, I need to sort of figure out, how do I know if the genetic algorithm is working? I can kind of see loosely that it is generally working in that if I were to refresh this whole page and run it again, you can see they start all going off in random directions. And one of them happened to get quite close. Uh, and you can start to see that over time, it looks like maybe more of them are starting to go towards that target. So the, 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 that array of vectors is sort of evolving towards a bunch of vectors that point straight up. So I have the sense, the general sense, that this is working. Okay? Um, but let's, how can I really kind of understand and know how, if this is working well or not working well? Well, one thing I could do um, is just like kind of find various things in my code to kind of look at. So what I want to do is create, um, I'm going to just say create p max fit. Um, so every time it runs, uh, um, I can kind of see what that maximum fitness value is. 363, I'm going to step to the side here, 355. So that makes sense. Like I'm getting reasonable fitness values, 366, 390. So, uh, so that kind of makes sense. That's a good sign that that maximum fitness is going up from frame to frame. So something's actually working. I would be curious to know to kind of just see um, the range of fitness values. So I'm going to say console log uh, this dot uh, rockets. Let's see if this, if I can look in the console here. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, I don't know why that wasn't coming out. 
but now I can see it and I can look on, at all the rockets and I can kind of see the fitness. Negative 0.36, negative 0.32. So you can see this is, these are the normalized values. It's a little weird that I got a negative number in one of them. Uh, but uh, fitness one, that was the one that had the maximum fitness. So you can see the fitness values are kind of making sense. So this is a good sign. So I'm happy that I have reasonable fitness values. Okay, I'm back. So what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to do some things to improve the fitness function. And one thing I just want to do is I don't want to let them go. When they hit the target, they're done. They've achieved their goal, and they should get like a super high fitness. So one of the things I'm going to do in the rocket itself is um, I am going. Uh, I'm going to look for the rocket, and in I guess what I'll just do this in the update function. I'm going to check the distance between this particular rocket's position and the target's position. Ooh. And uh, if that distance is less than like, I'm just going to say if it's less than like 10 pixels, then it's reached the target. So let's say, um, let's create a Boolean variable here called, uh, Oh, uh, I added something to the code that's kind of making it stutter a little bit. But I'm going to add a variable called this.completed equals false. And when it's reached the target, I want to say this.completed equals true. And then, um, and then I only want it to move. Uh, if it has not completed its goal. Uh, okay, so I only want it to update the physics engine if it hasn't completed the goal. Uh, and also, if it has completed, what I'm going to do is just say this dot position equals uh, a copy of the target's position. So I'm just going to actually move it to the target. So this will help actually um, give each of these the best score possible when they hit the target. And you should see none of the rockets should now go past the target. Um, the other thing I think is worth doing is I could say here, all right, well, um, if this dot completed, let's make things that have comp actually completed and reached the target. Let's take the fitness and multiply it by 10. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea, but I could just say like, you know, you're doing really well if you get close. But if you actually reach the target, your fitness is just like massively bigger. So um, I'm going to refresh the page. Uh, CodePen is refreshing automatically. And let this run for a little bit. I'm back. And you can see that the rockets have now evolved a nice path of going towards that target. So you can see they're all actually going along the same path. Now one thing I realized that I forgot to add to this genetic algorithm is a mutation function. So I'm going to add that right now. Um, and I'm going to put that right here under the crossover function. Mutation is good. In a lot of cases, you know, the, these rockets can now only ever have the path based on the original random vectors. So I could just write a simple function that just loops through all of their genes again. And um, what it does is it just picks a random number. And let's just have a mutation rate of 1%, meaning if I pick a random number less than 0 0.01, what I want is for that particular gene to, act, to just become a new uh, random vector. Uh, so I'm going to pick a new random vector. And <laughs> um, I am also going to then uh, set its magnitude to 0.1 which I think is sort of the arbitrary length of these vectors that we've decided. So now I've added a mutation function as well. And I can, after uh, in the population object, um, right here, after I call crossover, after I cross over one parent with another, I can also just say then child.mutation. And so now, if we let this run with the mutation function, we'll, we should see that you know, mutation will play a role that ultimately, eventually, they might evolve. Uh, uh, they'll be able to evolve an even more optimal path because, you know, you know, in this case, every single vector just really should just point straight up, right? That would be the perfect thing for it to evolve eventually. Now, here's something. Here's an exercise that you can think about adding to this. The length of time it takes for the rocket to make it to the target, that could absolutely be a part of its fitness, right? If it, um, 
If it makes it to the target faster, what is the current value of count when it makes the target? That's something I could save, and the, the lower that count, the higher its fitness. So I might leave that as an exercise for you to add in, but what I'm going to do right now is I am going to uh, add just a quick obstacle, because I think that will be worth it to sort of see. So let's make, um, let's make a rectangle in the window. Whoops. I'm going to draw a rectangle that's like um, start at x is 200, uh, uh, x at 200, y of 50, it's going to be 200 pixels across and 10 pixels high. And let me say fill 255 and it should be clearly be much lower down and maybe it should be start at 100 and it should be around there. Right, so there's an obstacle for you. <laughs> that's actually a pretty hard obstacle to get around. So. What I want to do, and, and let's make these uh, variables. Uh, Rx is, what did I say, uh, is uh, 100. Ry is uh, 150. And uh, Rw is uh, 200. And, and Rh is uh, 10. So what I want to test in the rocket object, and where is my rocket? <laughs> here it is. What I want to check here is in the update function, right? This is checking has it reached the target. But let's also see if it knocks into that obstacle. If pause.x is great, oh, okay, this.pause.x is greater than that rx value, and this dot pause.x is less than rx plus rw, right? If it's between there, and this.pause.y is greater than ry, and this.pause.y is less than the top of the rectangle plus the height, ry plus rh, right? In this case, it's also, it's, I'm gonna say it's dead or it crashed. This.crashed is true. So, uh, um, so I want it to start moving if it's completed. Oh, move if, uh, as long as it's not completed and it's not crashed. And we can say uh, the, the, each rocket now has a variable called this.crashed, which is also false. And then in the fitness, if this.completed, this.fitness times equals 10. If if this dot crashed, let's just set this dot fitness equal to one. So I'm not going to set it to zero. I probably should set it to zero, but, um, but let's set it to one, okay? So now we should see, let's see if these rockets over time evolve to go around the obstacle. Okay, so you can see now they've, it's been running for a little bit, but they haven't really evolved to go around the obstacle yet. So let's add a few things. Number one is they need a bit of a longer lifespan. So I'm gonna let them go for uh, 400 cycles. I'm also want to, um, I also wanna make them crash if they hit the edge of the window. That I think will help a little bit. Um, so let's, um, let me go to the rocket. And in this place where I'm trying to check if they've crashed, I can also check things like if this.pause.x is greater than width, uh, or this.pause.x is less than zero, then this.crashed is also uh, true. And I can also do the same thing with the uh, height. So I can also, uh, I can also, I can also have them crash if they go off the edge of the window, which I think will help. The other thing that I might consider doing is I'm gonna make a global variable called max force. Um, which is 0.1 right now. So I'm going to look for wherever I have mac 0.1. Right here, I always set the magnitude to 0.1. I'm going to now change that to the variable max force. And I want to set this to uh, max force. And there we go. And now, um, oh, look at this. These poor, poor rockets that start going down off the screen. It's going to take them a while to evolve out. So, you know, I should give them all, I, I should give them all a little nudge up 
That might be a nice thing for me to give them, but I kind of don't want to. <laughs> but I am going to give them a higher maximum force, which I think will help. So I'm going to make that maximum force 0.2, which I think. And then um, I also, though, want to limit their velocity, which I think will be helpful um, just to like, make it so they don't sort of spiral out of control. I'm in the rocket object. I'm going to here. Uh, say this dot velocity dot limit uh, like to four, and now that's a bunch of things that I've added. Let's let me zoom in here on our rockets, and I'm going to let this run for a little bit, and I'll come back when after it's run for a little bit, we'll see how it goes. So I've let this run for a little while, but unfortunately, all the rockets oh are crashing, um, and so the crashing just like totally ruins their fitness. And actually, the ones that crash kind of closer to the target, we kind of want to keep. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to divide their fitness by 10 when they crash. And that way, um, we still have the fitness scaled, so to speak. So let's have this run for a little bit longer and see what happens. I'm back. So these rockets have now successfully evolved. And you can see that one of them figured out how to get around this target and hit the, get around the obstacle and hit the target. You could see that it had some like accidental weird DNA in it that makes it go kind of like in this weird pattern. And they're all kind of doing that. Um, so this is where if I were to add something to the fitness function that gave the ones that actually make it to the target a little bit faster, a higher fitness, they would start to work out the path so that they wouldn't be kind of doing this strange extra thing. Because as long as they make it to the target before the end of the lifespan, they're fine. So I'm going to leave um, this video, I think, here. There are so many improvements you could make to this. I, I might like to make some of them at some point or come back and do a video. You might like to make those improvements and share them with me. Number one is just design-wise. You could add color, add design to the rockets. You could create a much more interesting maze or course for them. Uh, you could create obstacle objects and allow the user to move the obstacles around, make the target movable so they have to adapt and evolve. Uh, we could improve the fitness function in a number of ways, one by keeping track of the amount of time to reach the target. Uh, something that I'll talk about, I think I'll make a separate video about this, is just talking about why an exponential fitness function instead of a linear fi fitness function can be something that's quite useful, which you could add to this as well. Um, look for the next video, kind of how I do that. Um, so those are a bunch of ideas of how you could make this system a bit better. And in fact, one thing that I will do is I'm going to revisit this example in a future video looking at how a neural network or other types of machine learning algorithms might also be used to train uh, agents to move around the screen with a certain path. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this rather, I think, insanely long and scattered um, scattered uh, a coding challenge. The code itself will be available on both GitHub as well as a link to this uh, pen, this code pen that I created here. So you can actually just go straight to that link and play around with the code there as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in a future Genetic Algorithms video.